Hello everyone, my name is Ashton Gleckman. Today we're going to be taking a look at the violin. So what I wanted to do with this instrument series is to sort of help you guys better understand the instruments, how they work, and following that after we analyze the actual instruments, we're going to take a look at how they work in an orchestrational type setting, we'll talk about doubling techniques, and ultimately talking about how you can use all of these different orchestral instruments, of course, to create your guys' compositions. And this will help not only uh, from a traditional sort of more conservative orchestrational type view, but it will also help with your guys' use of samples and uh, sort of the technical technology world of music. So here we go, let's take a look at the violin. The violins are tuned in fifths, so it starts with G, and then it goes D, A, and E. The violin is also the highest instrument in the string family. A classical orchestra generally has around 12 first violins and 10 second violins, of course that also varies. Um, and throughout each of the different musical sort of eras, there have been multiple sort of variations of this amount. Film scoring in the modern day sort of orchestrational setting, um, there's going to be tend to be a little bit more violins, uh, but that's sort of a generalization. It all really depends on what the project is, but generally speaking, there's usually more violins. One worthy thing to note about the violin is the fact that it has the amazing capability to be able to play very fast lines, such as, for example, in Hedwig's Theme by John Williams or in a lot of Alan Silvestri scores. The scroll is located at the very top of the instrument. This is primarily there for decorative purposes. The tuning pegs are directly below the scroll located in the peg box. While the tuning pegs control the overall tuning of the instrument, the fine tuners adjust the tune quite accurately and with more detail. The nut connects the fingerboard and the peg box. The strings lie on the fingerboard of the violin. The fingerboard lies on the neck of the violin. The sound post lies within the violin and is located from the front to the back of the bridge. The purpose of the F holes is to allow the sound to escape the violin and to resonate to the audience. The bridges of the violin might be different for, say, a fiddle player and a classical player, but generally speaking, usually the classical players will have more curved bridges, while perhaps a fiddle player would have more of a flat. For example, classical violinists might prefer curved bridges due to the ability to play the right notes and being less likely to hit the wrong string. The tailpiece is at the end and is the closest to the chin rest. Unlike other instruments, this instrument has evolved throughout the centuries. For example, the Baroque violin was different on almost all fronts, including the neck, the fingerboard, the bridge, etc. The violin derived from a series of medieval instruments including the rebec and the fiddle. Here is an example of the violin being used in a classical orchestra setting. In a more folk-like setting, the violin might also be referred to as a fiddle. Here's an example of something in that style. The lowest note of a violin is G third octave, or G below middle C. The highest note is E7. One attribute of the violin is that it sounds beautifully being played solo. So as you can see, violins have made a dramatic impact on the world of music and still continue to do so. Not only do violins allow for us to pronounce our melodies in a beautiful way, violins are also an excellent choice to complement other sounds of the orchestra.